most of what you see growing around me here wouldn't be alive without irrigation. Yes, it's true, we have plenty of sand and rocks. Yeah, you're going to want to take a closer look at some of those rocks when you visit a very special nursery in Tucson. And that's because some of their rocks are alive. The reason that people are attracted to them is because they're so unusual. They look like little rocks sitting on the surface of the soil, and people can't quite figure out what they are. I'm surprised how many times people say, is this a plant? We're inside Plants for the Southwest, one of Tucson's hidden treasures for anyone with a green thumb. There's cactus and lots of desert plants you'd expect to find here, and some you wouldn't. They call these living stones. They're not cactus, not shrubs, and no, not rocks. Living stones is a common name for lithops, and lithops are, boy, they're hard to describe if you don't see them. They're, they, they look like little, little growing pebbles. They're weird and beautiful. Just ask Shane Evans. Lithops start out as a, a seed, like everything. They, the seed grows, they keep splitting, and when I say they split, the main pair of leaves open up, and out of the center of that main pair of leaves comes, emerge a new pair of leaves every season. How the heck do they photosynthesize? What's most amazing about these plants is how their life cycle kicks into overdrive when they know they're finally about to get some water. When the fruit gets wet, the fruit is star-shaped, and it opens up so that, so that it, it opens almost, you can see it open, you can watch it open. As it opens, it has little channels within the fruit. When raindrops hit the center of the fruit, the raindrops push the water through the channels with the seeds in them and make the seed scoot out of the fruit into its growing medium. In the morning we have a plant that's getting ready to flower this afternoon. The buds are coming up. These are the flower buds. These are buds that have opened for a couple of days so they haven't closed quite as tightly. And by mid-afternoon all of this will be a big sea of yellow. That's right. A plant that may barely be showing a bud at daybreak but can be full of flowers by afternoon. Lithops won't do this all year round, but when they do, it's spectacular. So I'm going to pour a little bit of water. I'm going to mimic a, a rainstorm. And we'll watch, we'll watch the fruit. You can, if you look closely, you can see the little fissures in each fruit. And it, I can see that there's already a little bit of change happening, but it takes, it takes a minute or two, or a second or two. The fruit will start opening up. I don't know if you can see, this one is starting to move. What's most pleasing are the textures and the shapes of the leaves of the plant. We've sent quite a few to South Korea. One more unexpected treasure hidden inside the Livingstones nursery is the work of this man, Miles Thompson. Sometimes they look a little bit sinister and others can be humorous, like I'm making a smirk or a little sarcastic, you know, thing. The stony faces Thompson creates can be witty, funny, scary, even haunting. But they're a natural fit among the living stones. No two are the same, I don't use any molds. Most people call these gargoyles, but that's not exactly what Thompson first set out to make. Wander through the clay with my fingers and my imagination and something starts to take form and I get quite excited about that. And I thought, I know exactly what I'm gonna do. You can even find more of Thompson's gargoyles in downtown Tucson, in a gallery setting at Shilago's Artworks. When you make the little ones, they're like making cookies, you know, you can do them in your sleep. And, and people do like them because they're portable and um, they can put them in a suitcase or, you know, shopping bag and get on a plane or whatever. But the big ones, some of them are really hard to, for me to even pack. Some of what you'll see in these faces are impressions of plants and other unique objects Thompson finds in the shops, fields, and alleyways of Southern Arizona. I'm always looking for textures. Like I'm in a grocery store and I'll see an interesting vegetable or a Chinese market and I'll see an interesting weird plant that I've never seen before that's edible but it's got an interesting texture. Or um, rocks, 
go to thrift stores, you find something, a broken toy that's got an interesting texture, um, wood bark. The most obvious one would be the choya wood, which has got a nice skeletal pattern. Arizona Highways Television is brought to you by Arizona Public Service and the Arizona Office of Tourism.